Hey, all you rad dads out there. <laughs> okay, let's start with the first question, Jay. Welcome to the Rad, rad, rad Dad Show. Um, it's a podcast where we talk uh, punk rock, parenting, and anything else that comes up. Talk to dads about being dads. There we go. First question, first question is, who are you? Uh, my name is Jay Bentley. I am the bass player of Bad Religious and the father of Dragon and Parabo. Yeah, you are and Miles and, I, I also have two other sons, Miles and Hunter, who are not, they're men. Make no mistake. My men, Miles and Hunter Bentley. Right. And, <laughs> and, one, and one plays with Dave House, right? Miles okay. used to, Miles was playing bass with Dave for a few years. Uh, you know, the opportunity arose. Miles is a great guitar player uh, and actually uh, was taking lessons with Dave Massey. He's like more of a metal guy, metal guitar player. And uh, we were out on tour with Dave, and Dave just told me how hard it was for him to keep a bass player. And I said, well, try out my son. I mean, he's a guitar player, but I know how easy that transition is. And it worked out well. And, you know, Miles had, had said, like, I kind of would like to give that a shot. And spent a couple of years out on the road and then said, I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> there <laughs> it's we go. Not for me. Yeah, it's not for me. The reason I bring that up is Dave also lives in Santa Barbara and has been on the Rad Dad Show. That's correct. Santa Barbara seems to be the hub here. Yeah, totally. It's 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 the connector. Um, it is. Do you consider yourself a rad dad? Yeah, I do. I do. Explain why. Um. Well, I, you know, it the, the 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 typical answer would be that I wanted to do something for my children better than my dad did for me. Not that my dad was bad. Uh, but I just wanted to, I never wanted to be their friend. I just wanted to be uh, someone who could help them understand whatever the world threw at them. And, uh, you know, people would say to me with my, with, when my boys were really young, uh, do they think it's rad that your dad is in bad religion? And I would say, I'm the guy that tells them to make their bed and take out the trash. They don't think I'm rad. They don't think I'm cool. They just, they go, dad made me sweep the leaves. That's, and that's sort of was my thing. It wasn't about like, I want to, you know, spoil them and, and make them think I'm rad. I just want, I want them to have a better shot at a life that, that would be less full of questions, even though we all have them. Like my dad left when I was eight. And so I had a lot of questions about like, what is this all about? And truth be told, most of those questions were answered by Brett and Greg when I was 15. Because that's, we all worked on that together. So in a, in a weird way, we were each other's dads. <laughs> that sounds dumb, but that's kind of how we grew up. Right. No, you kind of navigated the world together, right? And, and, yeah. Yeah. And, I, and, you know, it was a, it was a great way to learn because it wasn't, in that forced learning environment it was you you wanted to know these things i want to know more about these things how did, how did you find out more about being a parent i became a parent i mean there's no there are no hand, there's there's a couple of handbooks like well don't do this but in all honesty every baby is a little different and they don't come with a manual you just kind of have to figure it out you make a lot of mistakes and uh as long as the majority of, of your intention towards the child is, is done with love and, and, you know, wanting them to understand versus just demanding that they understand. That's what, those are two separate things. So, you know, it was, it was a lot of trial and error, <laughs> but now, you know, now I, I kind of, uh, it's weird for me. I just have a better grasp on it all. Like with dragon, he was born, uh, and eight hours after he was born, he went to the hospital and within four days he was having open heart surgery. And none of my previous experiences having children prepared me for that at all. I was not ready for that. Uh, but now having gone through that, I am prepared for that because it's, it changes you. Uh, and it changes your perception of the time that you have with your children. Because all of a sudden you realize it could go any time. And so I'm, I'm a lot more at ease about things because of it. I just take things in stride. 
Yeah, I, I kind of followed that on on your social media, and and I was just like, oh, I couldn't couldn't imagine what being a dad myself and seeing that like reflected from what you shared and stuff. And yeah, wow, wild. I, the only way I could, I, I I the only way I could really equate it was you know having someone knock on your door at three o'clock in the morning and say there's been an accident, hmm. and and it you're just kind of hit you're broadsided by this information that you're not prepared to deal with. We didn't know that he had a defect. We didn't know that, uh, you know, any of that. So when he was born, we, we weren't expecting to go into some procedure. There are actually children that they do know, and I don't even know. I mean, the heart is the size of a raisin. Right? How, how you figure out, oh, there's something, there's missing parts, how? Anyway, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, so we were, it was just learn as you go. And I think both Natalia and I sort of just got into this mode where it's like, okay, this is just what we're doing. And then we didn't really get too emotional about it. Um, and we just, we just stayed, stayed within this level of like, everything's going to be fine. And when doctors said that we believed them, we had no reason not to. Yeah, I can imagine what, what you went through. Congrats, you know, kind of managing that and, and you know, definitely a partner, I think, you know, and having that support is probably, you know, paramount to to getting through as well. And, and yeah. Uh, yeah. What are uh, some traits? What do you think some traits are of, of being a rad dad? Um maybe one of one of them would be what when I watch dads who have a healthy amount of respect for their children, they actually respect their children as people and not just, you know, you, you do this because I tell you to do this. Um, I think rad dads are, uh, you know, when you're, when you're in the kitchen cooking something and your child says, can I help? And you say, yep. Because it's not like, no, no, I just need to get this done. You'll, get, you'll, get, you'll just get in the way or you're going to slow me down. Or you're going to cut yourself and then I'm going to the hospital. Um, so I, when, I see, when I see dads, you know, working on things with their kids and, and doing things like bringing them into an adult, you know, cooking is, is not an adult thing, but it's just a, it's a human thing. And, and so, you know, being prepared to... Um, offer up a, a task that you know in your mind probably won't go but you're still going to let them do it because how else are they ever going to learn that when i when i see dads doing that like down here it's like wax your own surfboard fix your own skateboard you know yeah. here's some tools tighten up your forks on your bike <laughs> totally yeah i get that with hockey you know and my son uh, he loves hockey and uh he's actually at an oilers hockey camp this week and and uh, my, he's 11, my 11 year old. And when he started playing hockey and was, you know, big enough to carry his own equipment, he was carrying his own equipment. And, and I was a coach and I had to almost coach parents right. where they would be carrying their kids equipment. I'm like, no, they, they have to learn to carry their own. You know, it's, it's something simple like that, but there's kind of that, uh, right. that, that sense of responsibility, right. right? And it's kind of like that being a teacher uh, as right. well as, as a parent and son supporter. Right. And, 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 and being an actual supporter of your child's ideas, you know, not everything is, is like, you, you, maybe your child says, I want this. And in your mind, that's just insane. But you go, yeah, okay, let's try that. Cause you you're just, you have to, Unless everything just gets like, everything ends up being a question because you never know your child will never know whether or not that actually happens what happens when you pour mentos into a, a coca-cola bottle well, let's find out yeah. right so I, I i was thinking about with my with my boys when we lived up in vancouver and you know one of the things that i did was was a mistake on my part was i did fall into that material trap where it's like i want a skateboard yeah let's go get one i want a bicycle yeah let's go get one and i and and it was that wasn't a very smart uh that wasn't a smart lesson that I was giving them because really what it turned out to be was when they just the expectation came into play of like, well, why can't I have what I want? You've always given me that before. So I, I realized that I'd made that mistake with them growing up. And as adults, I took them both aside and said, listen, I did this when you were kids. Have you ever like just looked around and said, where's all my stuff? 
you know, I used to have so much stuff. And my oldest son said, yeah, I, I, Miles, he said, yeah, sometimes. And I said, that's my fault. And I'm sorry. And I apologized. And I told him the whole thing. He was like, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> so he just had a daughter. Uh, and so now he's sort of where I was, where he was terrified, terrified, terrified. And here's the baby. And now he's just the greatest dad. You can just see the love. And he's no longer terrified. He was terrified of the unknown, but it's no longer unknown. Alice is here and it's for real. And he couldn't be happier. Nice. So that actually is one of my, you know, was going to be an, another question I was going to ask you. Let's do it right now because you, you brought it up. Did you have any fears about being a dad? Oh, totally. totally you know, totally. I didn't, I didn't have a whole lot of, uh, I didn't have a whole lot of dad guidance. Um, my, my dad was, a, a how do I put my dad? My dad was a Marine, but he also just was kind of like this happy-go-lucky pot smoker. <laughs> so, you know, between the two of them, and it was like, not a whole lot of guidance, uh, just a lot of, this is the way you make a bed, and this is the way you fold your shirts. Um, and my mom remarried a, a really professional businessman, three piece suit, you know, drive to work every morning at seven 30, come home at six. Uh, and I, I really didn't have anything in common with him. So I didn't care about what his dad take was. So I, that was my, my fear was I wouldn't know what to do in the case of an emergency, and I didn't even know what an emergency was. I was just terrified of doing something wrong. That was more my, my biggest fear, uh, was doing something wrong. And then you, you kind of quickly realize that the best thing that you can do as a dad is just stay the hell out of the way when they're born because it's between the baby and the mom. And your job is to bring food and towels. <laughs> Oh, that's what, yeah, that's true. And a fan. I, uh, I had to bring the fan, a little portable fan. Yes. <laughs> so then that just that, that gone for about a year. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So how, 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 is, how has fatherhood changed you? Um, I don't, it hasn't, you know, I, I, I sort of sat and thought about that when we were out on the road when when my second son Hunter was born, and I realized that that parenthood doesn't change what I do; it just changes why I do it. <laughs> so you know, my 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 reason uh, for being out on the road or working or, or, you know, kind of anything was more geared towards, uh, not, not their success, but their, you know, their well being. So that, that, you know, my, my drive to do things was no longer about, uh, my desire for material goods or whatever, or anything. It was really about my desire to make sure that they had the things that they wanted in their lives. Please. So, so you say like more of a provider kind of like, I, idea. Yeah, which is you know you just you're you're no longer just sort of out there working for yourself. You're working for something that is is bigger than you, which is your family unit. Which you know that's like, that's kind of everything when you're. When you start a family and that family becomes, you know, your, you, people always say, you can't choose the family you're born into, but the family that you create, you do choose. You make this family, whether you like it or not, you made that. This is, this is now, now this is the one that you're responsible for. <laughs> Which, yeah, that to me, it brings a lot of, of fear. I sit, you know, I struggle with that. Like I have, so I have, um, you know, an ex-wife so we had to have a son so he's 11 and then uh, my current partner is, is uh, she has had a son who's 15 and then we just had had one being um 
nine months now. Right. And so navigating right. that kind of, you know, blended family, whatever you want to call it. Right. Is, 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 it's, is it's, but that, and that's pretty normal nowadays, right? That like, that's, that's pretty normal. A blended family is, is very typical. And if you ask, you know, students like, you know, uh, a, a child who's the age where they're a student at school and they can really comprehend that idea of a mixed family and say like, oh, mo more than half of my classes is exactly that. So it's not like when I was eight and my parents split up, I was maybe one of two other people in my entire school whose family had split up. And it was like, me and my sister were like, oh, I guess we're orphans now. <laughs> Just, <laughs> you, know, you really don't know what to make of it. You're like, I don't even know what I'm supposed to be thinking. Yeah, totally, totally agree with that. Um, how is um, this is a question I don't usually ask because you know not many people are in your position. You kind of you were like you said you have ch children that were are adults now, and and then you have some some younger. So being kind of an older dad, like what's your thoughts on that? Like, did, were you scared, or was that just kind of part of the plan? Or um, well, my daughter who's eleven was definitely part of the plan with my wife. Now, like my you know my ex-wife both children were, were were planned uh and with my with natalia uh parabo was was planned and she, totally by me she wanted it but never thought it would happen and i'm like no it's going to happen now because it's got to happen now I, this is how it's going to be and with dragon with dragon it was actually natalia and my daughter parabo that wanted dragon we want a sibling we want another one. I'm like, all right. <laughs> I was like, I was like, look, I'm out. I'll do it, but you know, nothing off my skin. You're saying like, cool. <laughs> oh, <that> was... <laughs> so, so also totally planned. Uh, and you know, great. Let's we can do that. And um, we we know that it's it's you know that fear of the unknown does not exist for me at all. Having a baby, I I I, I I've done it. I know exactly what's going to happen. The heart thing was a total curveball. I'm like, I did not see that coming at all. Uh, and even at, you know, now we're we're sort of over that, and we go to doctors twice a week, and we have tons of specialists. And people are like always in on him, checking his chest, and I love it. And I always have a smile on my face, and I say, this is great. I'm experiencing life with this child in ways that I really didn't think I would, because I thought having a child was the three ways that I had previously had a child but this one is totally unique and different and I love it. Does, does being older give you any kind of, I don't know what, the, the, what I'm looking for, like advantages or do you look at it differently or is it just, just like this new human being that, you know, you've been there, but kind of done that sort of thing. I think, I think the advantages are sort of like grandparents who are just, I had my kids and they moved away and then they had kids and now I'm grandpa and I give my grandkids chocolate all day long because I can. <laughs> now, I don't do that, <laughs> but, but I have, you know, my, my, my experiences are certainly different than uh, a lot of people who are my age now who are having their first child. And uh, age, uh, what I've realized is age is meaningless if you haven't experienced it. If you haven't had a child and you're having one in your late fifties, you're going to be as terrified as I was in my early twenties. So that's, I think that's the nature of, of that, that moment you realize you're bringing a life into the world that you are going to be 100% responsible for. It's like, oh, I wasn't ready for that. <laughs> Describe that, that that first experience with your first child when that, you know, that first time moment, you know, come into the world and holding them in your hands. Well, it, you know, it, a lot like Dragon, uh, Miles was born uh, with pretty heavy jaundice. And so they he was born and they kind of just held him up and whisked him away. And then he was gone. And we're like, where's where's the kid? Oh, he's, he's in an incubator off in another ward. OK, so where does he come back? He's not. Why? He has to be under a lamp for how long until he's better. When is that? We don't know. So this was us at the hospital now and we're going on maybe a week of like, <laughs> like they were just like, no, his, his Billy Rubin counts is okay. Yeah, I get it. I understand all of that. But like we, at some point we would like our, our, our product back. 
<laughs> we want our property. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so actually I, I went in there with his pediatrician and his pediatrician just took control and said we're taking that child right now and we did and so that that experience sort of um it 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 eliminated all of the fear of having a baby because now the desire was i want my child and that that sort of drove like now he's now he's home and now i'm just happy and, and I'm not afraid of anything because I was more afraid when he was missing at the hospital than when he was at home. And I remember I, I said, oh, I can't wait until you grow up and say, fuck you, dad. For the first time. <laughs> Great moment. <laughs> I'm still waiting for that moment. So, you know, it's coming. I'm, I'm, I'm a school teacher. I think it's I mentioned gone. to you, I'm a high school teacher. <laughs> so I, uh, my son's going in, into junior high and then. Um, my partner's son's going into high school. And so I'm, we're just kind of just it's waiting coming. for it. For, yeah, it's for totally it. coming. <laughs> it's <Yeah>. totally coming. <laughs> did, did you celebrate that moment, the, the first time? <laughs> uh, no, because I, I kind of, I, I laughed because I remembered saying that. And, you know, when it happened, I was like, okay, I, cool. I, I get it. Yeah. I do totally get it. And, and you know, it, it's, when, when kids are going, when children are sort of heading towards that, you know, going to leave the nest phase, and it doesn't necessarily mean like they're moving out, but they're, they are changing internally, and they're, they're really seeing their place in the world versus uh, the place that they think you want them to be in. And that independence and that growth is great, but it's also terrifying and super stressful for the child. And, and you know, when you see those outbursts of like, this is me. And you're like, yeah, okay. I like that. Like, I get it. You're, you're, you're making sure that you're setting your own boundaries. So, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, it's definitely a part of my life. When I was a child, I remember, uh, having that, that, I don't want to call it an anger or a rage, but it was just like this unrequited emotion that I would put out into the universe and didn't come back to me. And it, and it just, it just made me feel empty and it, no amount of uh, taking it out on my mom or my dad or my sister made that feel better. And when I discovered music and started going to punk rock shows, I said, this is, this is filling that hole. And I got in the band and, and I met these two other guys that were like me. They just were sort of like, we have a million questions and I'm like, great, I'm in the right room. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so, yeah, it's just, that's how that, that's, that's how that all came about. Nice. Are you comfortable, you know, talking about your relationship with your dad a little bit? Sure. No, my dad's great. You know, my dad's great. And, and uh, yeah, you know, my, my dad was one of those kind of guys. He was a seventies guy, right? I mean, in the fifties, he was a greaser. Mm -hmm. I, I'd say pictures of him rolled up jeans, you know, 57 Chevy hair, slick back t-shirt with the cigarettes rolled up in the arm, but Wichita, Kansas, which is, you know, smack dab in the middle of nowhere. And so, um, you know, he, he joined the Marines. They sent him out to Camp Pendleton in California, which is, you know, 40 miles from where I'm at right now. Uh, and when he got back to Kansas, he said, I'm not staying here. I'm going to go back out to California because California is rad. And he met my mom and got her pregnant, had my sister. They got married, had me still in Kansas. And my dad just said, all right, we're getting in the car and we're leaving which is rad. Thank you, dad. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, we, we got out here and, and he just, he wanted to live his California life, which was totally rad. And I, I think that's what I got from him was sort of this, uh, being okay about wanting to live your life, no matter what was going on around you. And so, you know, I, 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 I admired my dad things got bad when I was, you know, by the, when I was 18 and in bad religion, my dad was not happy with me and I didn't care. So obviously those were going to be big fights that would, that ended up sort of just, um, driving us apart for a lot of years. And I would go and see him and he would say, 
a dad thing to me and I go, you don't get to dad me. Like, you don't get that. Like, that's a privilege that a dad gets when they stay in a relationship and, 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 and I'm not talking about with my mom, they stay in a relationship with their child. When you go off and go live your life and kind of leave your child behind, except on the weekends and you forget their birthday and you don't come to basketball games and you just kind of blow it off. You just realize, okay, so that's the relationship that we have. We are two people who share the same last name and that's the extent of it. So now my dad and I are great friends because we had that conversation where I said, you're, you're, you're my dad, you made me, but you don't get the privilege of being my dad. That's a, that's that, that comes with commitment. So we've agreed on that and we're great friends now. And, and, you know, I, I get to look at him from a point of being proud of him for what he's done with his life and, and admire him. He, he lives in Humboldt County, uh, probably an hour and a half from the nearest town in the middle of nowhere, because he's allergic to people. (laughs) (laughs) And, and, you know, he just, he just lives a fucking rugged life that is like, if you looked at it and said like, that is something I could never do. Like, you're just a, you're just a tough dude, which is rad. And so, you know, I, I, I have learned through a lot of different experiences, whether it's becoming sober or having children, uh, that you can, you can set aside a lot of feelings, uh, and admire people for what they really are for, for who they are. And so I have that for my dad. I have a lot of admiration and respect for my dad and he does for me as well. And that was that mutual respect is, uh, that's what allowed me to let him be my dad again. Nice. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah. Was that, was that a hard conversation to have to kind of tell him that, that like, Hey, you know, you don't get this privilege, but uh, at the same no, time, I, want I, was, I was, I was mad. I was mad enough to say it right to his face. <laughs> and I'm like, I know you're not going to do anything about it. Cause now we're about the same size. And you know, I got, I got 27 years on you, dude. <laughs> <laughs> for you, for you. So, you know, it was, it just, it wasn't, it, it wasn't going to come down to that. Uh, and it, and you know, when, when he was, He wasn't, that's the thing, he wasn't necessarily giving me advice as much as he was telling me what to do because, you know, I know more than you and I, and I understand that, but I just, I just said, you're not, you don't get to have that. You don't get to tell me a dad thing. Now you can tell me if you're my friend because a friend, maybe you should try this. But other than that, I don't, I'm not, I don't care about what you think. Fair enough. There I go. What's the most rewarding aspects of being a dad? Uh, well, I, with, with, with my first two boys, when they were growing up, I had desires for them and, you know, I want you to be successful and I, and I want you to have, uh, you know, this, this, this style of life. And, you know, I, I, I want you to have all the, I want you to have all the things that you want. I, I really, you know, I wanted them to go to university and I wanted them to continue on with just doing all these things that I didn't get to do. But by the time they were both 15, 16, it was super apparent that they are not going anywhere. They're just going to do whatever they want. And, and that was the time where I had to sort of pull the inner dad in and just say, okay, well, what is it that I want? And I realized that I just wanted them to be happy. And so I, I, you know, again, I, I just, I would like to take them out and, and sit down with them. And, and so I just said, look, of all the things that I've ever wanted, I just wanted you to be happy. And that's, that's all that matters is that you're okay with things. And I'm not, you know, I'm going to be happy if you're happy. Is it, is it that simple? I, it is for me. You know, I, I, I just, you know, I, I, when you when you you realize sometimes when you're trying to impart knowledge on a child and by child i mean like 14 15 years old and you're saying things like look just don't do anything that will affect the rest of your life go to prison or or you know do something that you that you just really regret like think about things before you do them don't just no i I don't know i don't know why i did that then you know if you ever have a moment of doubt when you're in the middle or just about to do something don't do it and, and they both didn't care about that. And they both did things <laughs> just like, okay, 
And then, and, and, you know, you just roll with it and you realize it's not my life. And so somebody way smarter than me uh, one time said, from the moment that child is born, they are going to be exactly who they are and nothing you can say or do will change that. I, I kind of didn't believe it. I'm like, I, I don't, I, I think you can have a, 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 you know, an impact on the things that are important to them, but maybe they were right in terms of their desires and their demeanor. That's just them. They're always going to be them. I, I think that's, you know, if I look at my teaching career, I've been a teacher for 20 plus years and, now that, now that you've said that you know it's like sometimes I'm like I don't know if I'm making a difference you know maybe this maybe this will be the year <laughs> I, I mean I, 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 and I respect your position as a teacher because that's the you know the that sharing of ideas and philosophy is what really makes us as humans different from everybody else you know obviously other animals on the planet show their offspring how to here's here's a killer whale showing their calf how to get a seal off a beach it's like we, that happens but we have we have a lot more to offer in that sense um and teachers they're not necessarily responsible for a child's moral code and that's a big problem here for sure because parents just send their kids to school with zero morals they're just like hey, just go it doesn't matter right or wrong the teacher will tell you what's right or wrong it's like, that's not his job <laughs> but um you know i i just think for you it, it, it's a lot like how i see the band it's like we, i just want to open the page of a book and see what happens open this book and see what happens and maybe you get it maybe you don't I was the kind of student where when I was 16, 17 years old, I, I just didn't want to be there. But the weird part is, is when I was 30, I said I would, I would have rather been me now going to school because I really, I wanted that. And when I was 16, I, I didn't want that at all. I just didn't want to be there. And, you know, that's a, that's a, that has nothing to do with education and everything to do with sentiment and what we were talking about. Like I was born into this freak body, you know, that just, I, I wanted to go play music and get in trouble with people. I don't know why that was all I wanted. You know, I want, I want to skateboard. I want to play music and I want to get in trouble. And my dad, are you happy? <laughs> totally. <laughs> <laughs> Does does being in bad religion or you know just in the the punk scene or growing up did that influence your parenting at all? Like, no, not my parenting. It it certainly had an impact on my life and the way that I view a lot of things. Uh, you know, but I I think that maybe I shouldn't say that because I there's, I think of parenting in in two different phases where it's like the infant child where you're just like basically just changing diapers, feeding and, and trying to make uh, learning experiences accessible, whether it's, you know, how to get a, how to get a toy out of a jar or how to hold a pencil. But when, when the child starts to develop their own personality and they no longer want you to dress them, I'll put my own pants on. Thank you. And they, I want to, I want to pick my outfit for today. It's raining. I, I don't care. I want to wear this. And you have to sort of back off and go, you have to experience this. You know, you, you have to experience life in your way. And I, and I think the, that part of a child's life is, is where being in bad religion and punk rock and like sort of creating this, um, idea that that normal is subjective and you only say like well you know normal kids wear a raincoat i mean who's to say what's well, normal I, I understand that and and so the lesson was wear your hoodie out in the rain because i would always say you know being wet is fine being cold is fine being wet and cold is not fine <laughs> at all. And that was, and I said, and that's all I'm going to give you guys. That, that's your experience for the day. <laughs> so awesome. I, I think that, you know, my upbringing in this culture 
where I was having, you know, philosophic discussions about quantum mechanics. Uh, in a weird way, I could bring that to to my older children, not my younger kids, because they don't care about that. They just care about emotions. Um, and and I, you know, I. I can only say that I didn't have another life where, well, you know, I was in the hair metal scene in Los Angeles and this is what we all learned. I, I who the fuck knows what those guys were talking about? I don't know. <laughs> I don't, I, I don't think it was Schrodinger's cat though. <laughs> no, prob probably not. I, I appreciate you bring up uh, quantum mechanics. Uh, I'm a physics teacher actually. And, and uh, I just taught summer, <laughs> uh, a session in summer school and we always end with uh, a little bit of quantum, quantum stuff. So <laughs> I'm there with you. Yeah. I just love it. I love it. I love it. Yes. I would always say things like, you know, whatever, if for whatever was in the box, I said, we'll never know. If you open it, it changes everything. <laughs> yeah. The amount of memes I've seen about that is it's classic. I love it. <laughs> have you seen, you know, speaking of like, you know, quantum and, and I guess like nuclear stuff is, uh, have you seen the uh, Oppenheimer? Not yet. No. No. Not yet. Uh, neither I, have I. I'm looking forward to that. I, I, I you know, I, I, I I'm going to go see it in the same way that I'm going to go see Barbie. You know, it's just like, it's, I'm only putting this in, into context because something that I've noticed about a specific time in, in punk rock lore, uh, you know, this 78 to 82 time frame, uh, in my mind, this was a very important time in Southern California and for punk rock in general, because a lot of bands were being formed that were very influential on the future. And what I've noticed is uh, a lot of people are inserting themselves into that history in ways that maybe make it more about them. In, in other words, if I wasn't there, that would have happened. And sometimes I wonder if, if a movie like Oppenheimer is written in a way where it's like, well, you know, you're writing this movie based on a man not, not alive. I really know right and and so now we're at we're at this precipice of well we're going to make a movie that knows what we think he was thinking and this I, I haven't seen it but my understanding is like obviously it was a terrifying decision and he was he was morally broken over it but you know it, it's 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 always weird when you when you take a story like that and say, okay, we're going to, uh, we're going to deliver something that is once again, in a bad religion term, it's only entertainment. It's not, it's not a, it's not a documentary. And you have to go in with that mindset of saying like, okay, this is, you know, I'll, I'll go watch it. Cause yeah. it's sure. I mean, you know, now, now there's, uh, there, there's, there's already now a million, you know, conspiracy theorists saying like, the atomic bombs were never even actually detonated and it was just giant fans blowing over small houses in the desert it's like okay oh my god yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 well my friend i, I, I asked yeah I, a friend who watched it he said uh three hours wasn't long enough he, he felt that it as as long as a three-hour movie is it was still right um felt uh, a bit short in terms of like there's so much and so right. so many right. aspects I mean, of i think einstein yeah. was in like one one minute of the movie where he was kind of gave a scowl and you know he, he right. didn't approve of the bomb right. bomb and, and i'm sure he I mean, was a, if, you, if you if you actually think about how many people in their lifetimes have absolutely changed the trajectory of the planet the population of the planet was changed forever because the one person, <laughs> uh, there there aren't many people that carry that load, yeah. and you know it, it's a it's something that that should be studied. You know, uh, the big thing for me is like you know once we forget about history, it will repeat itself, right? We and 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 you start feeling it's going to get far enough where people will forget, and some dumbass is going to come along and do it again. Hopefully not that. <laughs> Hopefully not that. Hey, to, to, we'll wrap up here. Two, two last questions. Um, 
it's not not a not a dad one it's just you know tell us what's next for for you you know is are you doing you know obviously you're still touring and and stuff like that yeah. just kind of continuing yeah. that sort i mean of but, yeah i it's i <laughs> i run into people that i knew in high school uh and they said so what are you up to these days i go remember when i was doing high school yeah that still <laughs> just, just still doing that <laughs> that was great so yeah, I mean, we're playing shows, and, and uh, Brett sent a couple of new songs to Jamie and said, hey, throw some drums on this. And so Brett's writing songs. Greg said he was writing songs. Maybe we'll make another record. I, you know, we just, we, we have this theory in the band that, that as long as we feel like uh, we're relevant in, in our newest material and we're still having fun, and we're not thought of as, you know, those guys were great in 1982. <laughs> then, then we'll keep working and 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 enjoying this. Um, so, right now, this year was kind of it, because of COVID and and the way the world went. Uh, we got fortunate last year where uh, a lot of tours that we had lined up in 2020, they were just waiting until the world opened up and then we could come back and we just actually did. 90% of the tour that we had booked for 2020. But every band in the world wanted to get back out on the road after a three year hiatus. So this year for us was a little bit uh, of a struggle because we didn't have anything lined up. And it was like, wow, we really just got screwed because <laughs> we weren't thinking that it was going to be as hard to get back into venues and routings uh, and you know find people to go play with. It just got really super weird. Uh, we had a pretty decent tour lined up for the fall uh, but a member of the other band that we were going to go on tour with got sick. And um, so that kind of got put on hold. It, it's, it's after 43 years, this has been like an eye opening year of, wow, like this is what happens when you're unprepared for, for, you know, calamity. You're just like, Oh, everything is this, this. <laughs> Yeah, it's yeah, def definitely an interesting time or you know, that period during COVID and you know what's what's after. I have a number of friends who are, who run some, you know, venues in Edmonton and stuff and just trying to still navigate that that world is right, right. And it's changed, right? Yeah. Yeah, now, definitely. And now I know, you know, the way things are going in the States. Um I talk to a lot of like younger bands and, and I mean just all bands where it's gotten so expensive, like, you know, gas, renting a, a van, hotel rooms, just all of it is so expensive now. There's there's a level where a band just says, we can't afford to tour. It's yeah. just not possible for us to get on, on the road and, and fill the gas tank up to make it to the next town. We just can't do it. Yeah, and it doesn't bode well for Canada, you know, being Canadian, like, because our, our cities, you know, as you know, they're not that close, you know, to each other. Right. You know, maybe Edmonton, Calgary, right. that's it. And so it, it seems like there's a dearth of, of bands kind of coming up here that, that used to, and it, it sucks. <laughs> yeah, I, it, it does. And, and I, don't, I, don't, I don't know when that will change. You know, we're 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 planning on on doing a proper Canadian tour where we just go either east to west, west to east, one way or the other. Um, and so that that you know, we're talking about that, and and everybody knows like the spreads on that. Like you got when you're driving from Vancouver to to Edmonton or Calgary, like that's a long drive, and and Calgary. Well, we wouldn't. That well, the point was, you know, we're talking about like we'll have to play some some middle areas, some good fun spots. Yeah, let's do it. Take it all the way yeah. up to EI. <laughs> I think one of my most memorable shows seeing you guys was there. You were supposed to play a festival at Edmonton. I think it got canceled, but then they you did you guys did a show at Union Hall, pretty yes. small small venue, uh, which was you know a treat. Being a, a, a fan of your band for sure, seeing, yeah. seeing a, play I mean, a small I, club like that. When, when things like that all come together, and you know you're like you roll in, and it's like this is canceled or whatever tornado or whatever <laughs> you're like yeah sure let's go play another show and, and it works out that's always those are my favorites as well that's sweet it happened to pennywise too during like like covid kind of they were touring rise with rise against 
and uh, a few people in Rise right. Camp got uh, got sick and had to cancel that tour. But Pennywise, they then played like a pop up show at uh, at Union Hall, so it was kind of a kind of a neat treat too. Last question, Jay. What uh, do you have any words of wisdom for any of the dads out there listening? Yeah. Uh, stay out of your own way, really just, you know, try to, try to not think that, that your way is the way. <laughs> I think that's where, that's, that's where we're realizing if you can, if you can just take a step back from morning to make sure that everything's the way it is, damn it, then you, know, you, you can be a happier dad. I think happy dad is, is much better than angry dad. What do you want that so bad? That, that's that's some good some good words. It, it actually it's it's uh, mimics. Uh, I interviewed Brant Bjork, and he 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 ended with something along those lines. You know, be a be a glad dad and a rad dad, yeah. not a not a mad and sad dad. Not a mad dad. Don't be a mad dad. <laughs> there we go. That would be a different show for sure. <laughs> that's it. And honestly, that's, it it takes effort. You know, in it's weird because none of those things really do come easy. Um, I, my feeling tells me and my experience tells me that the easiest expression for a dad to have is actually anger. You just, you just, ah, what the, ah. like, that's just such a dad moment. <laughs> I'm going to pull this car over. And you just, but if you could just not like think like, okay, you know what? I'm just, I, I don't want to be so stressed out. It is stressful. Having babies are stressful. Having teenagers is stressful. Having adult children is stressful. It just it is, and and so accept accept it. Hi. Accept accept your dad spot. Hi. There we go. Okay, well we'll end it there, Jay. Accept your dad spot. There we go. <laughs> Hi. Bye, Dragon. Bye, Dragon. Bye, bye. Bye. <laughs> See you, man.